So AI is actually something I've been utilizing a lot in my workflow for my videography business. So today I'm gonna try something interesting, something new. I'm going to have AI be the podcast host and I'll be the guest and kind of use this to hopefully allow y'all to get to know me a little bit better in a way that requires zero planning from me. All right. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Today, we're doing something a little different. I've got a special guest. Well, it's actually you, our host. We're turning the tables, and I'm going to ask you some questions so our listeners can get to know you better. Let's dive in. To start, what's one life lesson you've learned that you find yourself coming back to time and time again? Hmm, that is a good question. I think that the relationship with yourself is the most important. And when we look at what brings fulfillment and happiness for people, like according to the research, it's strong and healthy relationships. And I actually don't think that you can have a strong and healthy relationship with others if you don't have one with yourself. Absolutely, that's a powerful insight. It reminds me of the idea that you can't pour from an empty cup. Building that strong relationship with yourself forms the foundation for everything else. How do you nurture that relationship with yourself? Do you have any practices or habits that help you stay connected to who you are? You know, it's a funny question. A lot of the time we make this distinction about like loving other people versus loving ourselves. But I think the acts that we practice when loving others are the same when it comes to loving ourselves. For me, I decided it has to include two parameters. And those two parameters are, you would do anything for them. And the second is you have radical acceptance for who they are. And that goes the same with self-love as well. Like you would do anything for yourself. If that means quitting a bad habit, getting out of a bad relationship, doing what's incredibly uncomfortable, you will not let yourself down. But if you only have that aspect of love, then you end up being extremely hard on yourself. You end up judging yourself for when you fall short. And that's when radical acceptance comes into the picture. There's gonna be times where you're just gonna to have to hold yourself and say that everything's okay and that you are worthy of love, whether you achieve that thing or not, whether you live up to that thing or not. But if you only have that, that part of, of self-acceptance, then what ends up happening is you become complacent in life. You don't hold yourself accountable. You end up making decisions that are bad for your body, for your physical health or your financial situation or your personal relationships and you begin to make excuses because you're only focused on radical self-acceptance and so for me love and building that relationship with yourself will always have to include those two things that's such a well-rounded perspective balancing accountability and radical acceptance is key isn't it it's about striving to be the best version of yourself while also being gentle when you fall short. This dual approach helps maintain progress without losing sight of self-worth. How has this approach shaped your journey in personal growth and fulfillment? Have you found it influences the way you connect with others on their journeys as well? I think it does affect the way that I interact with others on my journey. You know, I think because those standards, those two things, you know, those standards can feel high for a lot of people. And once you hold those standards for yourself, it becomes incredibly hard to have lower standards for your friendships and relationships. And so you end up having these high standards that not a lot of people can kind of live up to. And that becomes a struggle because, you know, you want to accept people for who they are. You want to love people. You want to have relationships. And, and there's this knowing that nobody's perfect, that Nobody has it figured out. And sometimes, you know, these, <laughs> these, these standards, they make me question myself. Like, are these standards too high? Am, am I expecting too much from people? Are there days where I expect too much of myself? But, you know, I think when I, when I really zone back to the core of that ethos, then to love others means that I would do anything for them and that I can radically accept them. I'll accept them no matter what. But in that, you know, you need to have boundaries for who you can actually give that to. So for me, it's always, are they filling your cup? Is there reciprocation in that relationship? 
to the point where it feels sustainable for the both of you. Because if you're showing up in a relationship trying to give genuine love, which is those two parameters that I spoke about, and you're not receiving that back from a relationship, it can be extremely painful. It can be draining. And ultimately, I think it impacts your relationship with yourself because you're prioritizing uh, the needs of others over filling up your own cup. You've touched on a very important point, boundaries. It's interesting how setting them can actually enhance our relationships, including the one we have with ourselves. When we know our limits and communicate them, it allows us to give and receive love in a healthier, more fulfilling way. How do you navigate setting those boundaries, especially when it comes to ensuring your own cup is filled? That is an extremely good question. It's a hard one to answer. You know, I, I don't think I figured it out, but in this journey of, of radical love for myself, others, and trying to incorporate boundaries into all of that, I think enforcing boundaries a lot of the time is just feeling guilty. It's, it's feeling bad for letting people down. It's, it's feeling bad for not showing up for people, but you're not even gonna be able to show up for that person to your full capacity if you're not making sure that your own cup is filled. So I think, you know, not judging yourself for when your boundaries may upset people or, you know, temporarily affect relationships is extremely helpful. And knowing that the real friendships that are gonna offer you that real, genuine, radical love, they'll understand that and they'll accept that because they're offering you that same love back. So I think whenever you're setting a boundary and that boundary ends up making you lose that relationship, I think ultimately what, what that's telling you is that that relationship is not for you. It's not one that's reciprocal. It's not one that's going to feed your soul and actually lead to fulfillment, happiness, joy, or genuine connection. That's a wise perspective. Boundaries can indeed feel uncomfortable, but as you said, they are crucial for sustaining genuine connections. It's about recognizing that those who truly value and reciprocate your love will respect your need for self-care and personal space. It seems like this approach not only fosters deeper relationships, but also empowers you to live authentically. How has this balance of love and boundaries influenced your sense of happiness and fulfillment? You know, I feel like maybe in this, I've gained a lot of self-confidence, that my relationship with myself has gotten a lot stronger, which means that I kinda am less dependent on other relationships. On this journey, don't get me wrong, it's, it hasn't been easy. <laughs> you know, uh, feeling like you're losing friends, feeling like you're losing contact with people, feeling like you're leaving your whole life behind, like a whole past version of yourself. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, to become the person that you want to be, you have to let go of the person that you have been. And in the past couple years, I've been willing to let go of that version of myself and accept all the consequences with doing that. That's a profound transformation. It sounds like you've really embraced the journey of self-discovery and growth. It's inspiring to hear how you've shifted your sense of happiness and fulfillment to be more internal, relying on your own sense of self-worth rather than external validation. Letting go of past versions of ourselves can be daunting, but it's often necessary to make space for who we're meant to become. How has this evolution impacted your approach to your podcast and the stories you choose to share with your audience? Damn, <laughs> that's a good question, man. Um, you know, I think the way that it's affected my creative process is that I'm less afraid of trying new things. I'm less affected by the judgments of others when creating and sharing my art. It's easy to feel afraid to actually express yourself authentically and honestly, or to, or to put anything out into the world to be judged. Because if you're judged, then that compromises that safety you have with your friend group or with these people that have known you for so long. Like maybe your family and friends will think your content is cringe or your ideas are weird and maybe you won't be accepted. And I think that was something I wrestled with a lot more in the beginning, but now going on this journey of self-discovery and self-acceptance, 
I think that those things weigh on me a little bit less, which frees me up to try new things like this and, uh, and share my ideas more freely and authentically. That's a fantastic shift. By embracing your true self and letting go of the fear of judgment, you've opened up so many creative possibilities. It's liberating when you reach that point where you can express yourself authentically without being tethered by others' perceptions. How has your audience responded to this more authentic version of your content? I guess we'll have to wait and see because I haven't talked to them in a long time. Uh, talking to you right now is going to be my first episode that I put out uh, in probably like a, a good few months now. So uh, hopefully... I can share this newfound growth through this journey with my audience and uh, you know, I'll let you know. I'll let you know how that goes, man. That's exciting. Coming back after a break with fresh insights can really resonate with your audience. It's like inviting them to join you on this journey of growth. I'm sure they'll appreciate your honesty and the new perspective you bring. Can't wait to hear how it goes. Thanks, man. This was great. Thank you so much. I'm going to wrap up this pod. And uh, yeah, man, thank you for, for being a sounding board and asking such great questions. It was my pleasure. I'm glad I could be part of this conversation. Looking forward to hearing your next episode. Take care and talk to you soon.